Hi there! Did you ever had the need of a dual power supply for an experiment on operational amplifiers, for example, and you only had available a single power supply? Well, sometimes it is possible to avoid the usage of a real dual power supply if your circuit has limited current and power needs. Let's see how. If you need a dual power supply for a very light load, and your load is perfectly balanced, then it is easy to use a single power supply instead, and add a couple of capacitors to it to get an intermediate voltage that lies exactly in between of them, just like in this picture. The two capacitors in series, since they have the same capacity, would charge each at the exact half the voltage provided by the single power supply. This way, we would have a voltage of half BDC between J1 and J2, and the same voltage between J2 and J3. If we consider this circuit as a black box with only three connectors available to us, we would think that J2 is ground, J1 has a positive voltage with respect to ground, and J3 has a negative voltage with respect to ground. And it is for this reason that we say that J2 it is a virtual ground. Now, if the real power supply VDC is totally isolated from the real ground, then we could put J2 to the real ground and use J1 and J3 as a dual power supply. Isn't that nice? Well, yes, but don't be too fast in using this kind of dual power supply for all your needs. In reality, to use this circuit as a dual power supply, you must have a load that draws exactly the same amount of current from J1 and J2, of course in opposite directions. If you don't have such a load, then one of the two capacitors will start to discharge to compensate for the excess of current on its side. The result would be that the voltage on J2 would not be any more half the way between J1 and J3. We say that the virtual ground would start floating toward one of the two voltages, the one on J1 or the one on J3. At that point, the circuit would not provide any more a good dual power supply. If the unbalanced load condition is constant, the same capacitor will keep discharging, while the other capacitor will charge more to keep the overall voltage between J1 and J3 constant. If the unbalanced condition switches back and forth from one end to the other and vice versa, like when powering an op-amp that amplifies an AC signal, then the average effect will maintain stable the virtual ground. And that's why we can use this simple circuit when powering op-amps working on small AC signals, but we cannot use it for basically any other thing. Let's look at this behavior in lab, and then we will see how this circuit can be modified to help keep the virtual ground from floating around. Like we said already, this circuit is basically a voltage divider made up of two capacitors. Considering a single power supply providing a voltage VDC, this center point will be at half VDC, and we can call it virtual ground. Measuring the voltages at J1 and J3 using the virtual ground J2 as a reference, we have that J1 has a positive value of half BDC, and J3 has a negative value of half BDC. All of this assumes that we have no load, or that the load is perfectly symmetric with respect to the virtual ground. If the load is not perfectly symmetric, the capacitor on the side of the greater load will discharge to compensate for the imbalance. And this will cause the voltage on its side to lower, and the virtual ground to move toward the opposite side. Once that happens, it is practically impossible for the discharged capacitors to regain its charge, even in the case the load is removed. Let's see how this circuit works in practice. Here is the circuit which I built on a breadboard. You see four capacitors on it instead of two, and that's just because I didn't have two capacitors of two millifarad each, so I put in parallel two capacitors of one millifarad on each side, the top and the bottom. This black wire represents the virtual ground, the VDC power supply is injected here, and it comes from this DC power supply. Here, instead, we have the connections with the oscilloscope and the load. 
the virtual ground is connected to the ground of the oscilloscope. And then we have two probes, one for the positive voltage and one for the negative. So one probe is between J1 and J2, and the other probe is between J3 and J2. If you try this experiment, make sure that the power supply on the left is totally isolated from ground, otherwise the oscilloscope will short the wire J2 toward the ground of the power generator. Here is the oscilloscope screen, where you can see three traces. The yellow trace is the one from the probe connected to the positive side J1, which right now is showing zero volt since the generator is currently off. The blue trace is the one from the probe connected to the negative side J3, also currently at zero volts. The third purple trace over here is the sum of the voltages on channel 1 in yellow and channel 2 in blue. As long as the two voltages on J1 and J3 have the same absolute voltage value, since one is positive and the other is negative, the sum will be zero volt. However, if the load is unbalanced, then one of the two absolute voltages will lower, and the other one will increase, and we will see the purple line move toward the side with the highest absolute value. This trace, in fact, represents the virtual ground. Let's now turn on the power supply, which I have set to 12 volt. We can see that the yellow and blue traces have moved respectively to plus 6 volts and minus 6 volt, while the purple trace is still at 0 volt. Let's turn on the load now, which is connected to the dual power supply side through these red and black alligator clips. Let's now increase the load, which is now around 240 milliamps. And we can see that the oscilloscope is still measuring the exact voltage we had before, since the load is perfectly balanced. Let's now unbalance the load, and for that I am going to use a small value power resistor. This one is of 2.7 ohm. I am going to connect the resistor between the negative output and the virtual ground. And now, even after I remove the resistor, look what happens to the voltages. Basically, the positive voltage has increased, and to see the trace I have to change the scale. The negative voltage has practically gone to zero volt, and the virtual ground is now at plus six volt. To understand why that happened, let's take a look at the schematic. I basically applied a resistor in parallel to the capacitor at the bottom, discharging it entirely. At the same time, since the total voltage is fixed to 12 volt, the capacitor on the top got charged to the whole 12 volt. At this point, since there is no voltage applied at the bottom capacitor, it cannot recharge anymore, and the voltage is permanently modified as we have seen on the oscilloscope. From now on, to charge both capacitors at 6 volt each, I would have to turn off the 12 volt power supply and manually discharge both capacitors. And this is the big problem with this kind of dual power supply, the impossibility to regain a sort of equilibrium without intervening with changing appropriately the load or totally discharge both capacitors and start all over from the beginning. To obviate this inconvenience, this basic circuit must be modified to be able to handle unbalanced loads, up to a point, of course. Let's see how. We have seen that the problem comes from the change in position of the virtual ground. Once the virtual ground reaches one of the other ends, there is no coming back, because one of the two capacitors is basically shorted and unable to recharge. The trick to make this work is to provide a mean for that capacitor to charge, and that can be achieved using a voltage divider made out of resistors, and use the capacitors only for providing a little bit of juice when there is a sudden but short unbalance in the load. And that is the reason for the presence of resistors R1 and R2 in this new schematic. The voltage divider is now provided by R1 and R2. The large electrolytic capacitors will help keeping the virtual ground in place while there is an unbalanced on the load. The two small capacitors will provide a similar help, but for load variations that are too fast for the electrolytic capacitors to act. With this circuit, we can power up a circuit that is mostly but not totally unbalanced, as long as the unbalance is not constant, but changes over time, so that its average is still null.
As a rule of thumb, this circuit can hold well short time imbalances of the load that do not draw more than half the current going through the resistors. Even if the current is greater than that, and the virtual ground starts floating away, as long as the unbalance is not permanent, this circuit is still able to recover and reposition the virtual ground half the way between J1 and J3. Let's verify this in the lab. Summarizing, this time along with the capacitors, we have two resistors that work as a voltage divider that nails the value of the virtual ground when the load is balanced, and after an unbalance goes away. Capacitors C1 and C2 act as filters for high frequencies, while C3 and C4 work at the lowest frequencies. In other words, R1 and R2, forcing a non-null voltage on the middle point, allow any of the capacitors that have discharged from an unbalance to recharge again when the unbalance is removed. Let's take a look at the actual circuit. Here we have the same load used with the previous experiment, and this is the circuit which I built inside this Altoid container, because I wanted to mount it permanently since I plan to use it in the future. You can see inside of it the big electrolytic capacitors, the resistors, and the polyester capacitors. Here is the same power supply used before, and here is the oscilloscope, connected the same way as in the previous case. Let's turn on the power supply. And the voltages are now set to plus and minus 6 volt, while the virtual ground is at 0 volt. One interesting thing to note, different from the previous case, is that even in the absence of a load, there is a current drawn by the circuit, and that is the current going through the resistors R1 and R2. Let's now turn on the load. Make an adjustment to draw some current, and the oscilloscope shows a well-balanced circuit and voltages. I'm now going to use the same resistor I used previously to unbalance the load. Now I'm removing it, rebalancing the load, and if we look at the oscilloscope we see that the voltages are still fine. But let me do that again while you watch the oscilloscope monitor. Look, there is a clear drop of voltage on the positive side and an increase on the negative side while the virtual ground starts shifting. But now, I am with the resistor, and look! All the three voltages go back to normal. Consider also that I used a high-level current, but if the current was in the same order of magnitude as the one through the resistors, the voltage change would have been limited, and it would have corrected itself much faster when the load became balanced again. An example of that behavior would be, for example, the case where we power up an amplifier for small signals, like an op-amp with dual power supply. A circuit like this would allow us to use a single voltage generator and present a dual voltage to the op-amp power supply pins. You see now how this kind of circuit may become useful in several situations, where we need a low-power dual-voltage supply, but we only have available a single-voltage power supply. Remember, the key word here is low-power. We can use this kind of circuits only for low-power devices. For high-power devices, or for devices that are unbalanced by definition, you still need to use a real dual-voltage power supply, or the virtual ground will float too much for being useful. I hope you found this video both interesting and useful. Please let me know in the comments what you think about it. And before concluding, I quickly remind you to subscribe to the channel and to enable the notifications if you haven't done so already, and so you won't miss any future episodes. I'll see you in the next video, and in the meantime, happy experiments!